on Ruddy and what it looked like. There's a, you know, there's a, a, you got Jasper Stone in Revelations 4 uh, that the Bible uh, depicts the Lord on the throne. And then you got Ruddy in a few uh, scriptures as well. All right, so when you look at Ruddy, red, this is what it looks like, right? That's what ruddy looks like. It's, it's your blood, because our blood vessels cease through our pores, but it's through our melanin. We, we still have melanin. Esau don't got melanin. Wasted away is he. All right, so the melanin is, he don't have melanin, so the blood vessels cease through his pores. The blood vessels see through our pores as well, but what covers it is the melanin. So when the sun rays and the sun and the sunbeams shines upon us, we look like ruddy. We look red, but not like red, like Esau red, because he has no melody, but red like ruddy, copper, copper tone, penny color. All right, look at these, look at these two uh, individuals right here. You know, and they have the woolly hair with the ruddy toned skin. See that? Now, is that an Edomite? No, absolutely not. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, go to the one with the stones. Yeah. Okay, this is another one. Yeah, go back. Yeah. This is another one. This is uh, Revelation 4, 2, and 3. Behold, a throne was set in heaven and one set on the throne and he that sat was looked upon like a jasper you know what i'm saying like this is what the lord looks like no the lord don't got flesh but he this is this is the image this is what he's seen all right and he's he's ruddy this is what ruddy looks like right hey the indigenous people of america they was ruddy they had that ruddy look and another um definition for that will be uh like a handsome looking individual uh so every time you see the word ruddy being mentioned in the scriptures in an actual scripture it's referring to one's beauty yes. nowhere in the scriptures is esau ever referred to as ruddy is it one of the definitions of esau yes but that is not what was being described in that particular scripture in genesis 25 25 right you know it just said it was talking about him being red so, red that's it right Don, it's the book of first right. samuel chapter 16 and verse 12 and he sent and brought him in now he was ruddy oh he's a white man now he was ruddy he's a pale face now he was ruddy right. and with all of a beautiful countenance right he had a beautiful countenance so ruddy that's like calling somebody uh, maybe a handsome you a handsome man all right ruddy all right, he's using all, and you know, back in the ancient world, they use these different terms to uh, identify a person's, uh, you know, beauty or, you know, kind of points them out on that. And so, when you see ruddy, it's two meanings to it. Right? So, far as far as Esau, and we was talking about it earlier, in this modern world, you have rednecks. But then you have, uh, you know, back, especially in the early, early 90s, there was a term called uh, 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 red bones, light skin. Light skin red bones versus a red neck. It's two different race of people that everybody, without j with just saying it, everybody knows, okay, a red bone is, is a light skin woman or man that's black. But a red neck, we know is, is, a, is a hillbilly that lives up in the mountains and probably mess with his sister in there. So everybody knows, like just mentioning that, everybody knows the difference between a red bone in this modern society versus a red neck. So likewise, when Esau is named Red and David is called Ruddy, it's almost exactly the same thing dealing with a red bone versus a red neck. <laughs> Two different race of people. Oh, I got another preset real quick. This is in the editions of Esther, chapter 15, verse 5. And she was ruddy through the perfection of her beauty, and her countenance was cheerful and very amiable. 
You know what I'm saying? So even talking about Esther and how she looked, it called her ruddy, but it describes ruddy as being beautiful, right? Through the perfection of her beauty, it called her ruddy and perfect. You know what I'm saying? Nowhere, again, nowhere in the scriptures was Esau called ruddy, beautiful, perfect. He wasn't. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't that. So, but come, we can get back to it. Or, you know, even if you just like Google images of say, type in a ruddy horse. Yeah. What color is a ruddy horse? You know what I'm saying? It, it looks more in complexion to a so-called brown skin, uh, so-called black man. You know? That's a, you look up, type in ruddy pig. That don't, that's not like the complexion of a European person. That, I mean, I would say that's brown. That's reddish brown. <clears throat> right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then look, look and at look, the sister yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah, blow up on that. Blow, blow up, up the sister that. right there next to the horse. It's the same two, complexion. Two ruddy, two <laughs> ruddy people. One's an animal. Yeah. And the other's a woman. That, yeah. That's the real color of ruddy. It ain't even light. Look at her that. face. Look at her face and look at the horses. Yeah. They got not, the same complexion. It's not even light skin. You can see the reddish brown tint. That is you know ruddy. That's like, a ruddy woman. Like Esau, so called white people, they turn rosy red. Yeah, rosy red. You know what I'm saying? It's different colors of red as well. Yep. That's mentioned in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But she and the horse is a ruddy, ruddy red. You know what I'm saying? We see Esau, you know, whatever the case, embarrassed, cried, you know, <laughs> laugh hard. He turns rosy red, bright red. You know what I'm saying? We have a, you know, a, a ruddy red to our uh, complexion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, summertime right now, some of us get a little tan. We, we turn this color out here, man. Mm -hmm. We get ruddy red. I got a little picture of me when I was 10 years old and I, I used to trip off of it prior to the truth. Just look how red I was. Yeah. Like I remember that picture. I was 10 years old, standing next to my cousin. Red as can be, man. I wish I could pull that up right now. You know, but nonetheless, yeah. So, brother got the definition. Yeah, so I, I just want to bring this out real quick uh, for that um, word for ruddy right here. It's the same word uh, you strong uh, strong H one thirty two um, here in uh, First Samuel sixteen and twelve and in uh, Genesis twenty five twenty five. Now, again, there are there is a difference because when it says red ruddy of Esau as infant, why does it say in parentheses? And the first time it's been, this word is being used is in reference to Esau as an infant. It's because when we look at um, babies that lack melanin, right, that lack that melanin, when they come out the womb, they're red, right? And why is that? It's because when you go to the other definition for um, Adam, for example, so it says red, red to cause to show red, to show blood in the face. It's like it to show blood in the face. You see that? Damn. Rosy. There you go. Rosy red. Rosy. Flush. Yeah. You know, you the mice they get embarrassed. You kind of slap them up a little bit. They turn red, literally. Right? So when ruddy is being referred to our people, it's not exactly the same. And even going down to a scientific level, it's not the same. Edomites right. have what's called phenomelanin. And Pretty much every nation outside of Esau has eumelanin, which is a certain level of melanin within their pigmentation. But Esau is really the only nation that has that type, that variation of melanin called phenomelanin, which is the absolute um, absence of melanin overall, all right? Which causes them to show forth their blood in their face and in their, and in their skin, causing them to turn pinkish reddish, all right? So uh, again, that's a false equivalency to call to say that just because David was called ready and Esau was called ready, that this is the, the same type of red that is being referred here. No, that's not this. That's not true. Context supersedes etymology. All right. And um, I don't know if brothers had a, a point of preset, but I did have something on David. Yeah. God. So. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, bring this out real quick. First uh, Samuel chapter nineteen, verse thirteen. We know first of all. Before I get this, um, I'm gonna go to Ruth chapter four. Now, the the great grandmother of David is is uh, Boaz. I'm just like it, Ruth, and his great grandfather would be Boaz. So I'm gonna read this uh, Ruth chapter four, 
verse number 20. And Ninadab begat Nahashon, so like it, Nahashon begat Solomon, and Solomon begat Boaz, and begat, Boaz begat Obed. Obviously, Boaz got with Ruth. Ruth is a Moabitess, all right? She looked different than the Israelites, all right? It says, and Boaz begat Obed, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David. So we understand this. So let's go back to 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse number 13, right? It says, and Michal took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster and covered it with a cloth. Why did she take a pillow of goat's hair, right? Let's look at what, what, what does goat's hair look like, right? Goat's hair, right? It's lucky. <laughs> Right? Hey, this this is goat's hair. You see that? Goat's hair is different. It's like that wavy curly hair. Alright? It's not like a necessarily like a sheep. They have wavy curly hair. Alright? So again, even David from this precept, David, you know, he he had slightly different hair. Alright? He may not have uh may I have not have uh, you know, that that Yahweh type of woolly textured hair. Otherwise, I mean, why would McCall get goat's hair? She could have got cotton, she could have got wool, but she got goat's hair in specific because that's the closest thing to the to the texture of his hair. Alright? Which makes sense. Because again, Ruth, which is a Moabitess who, who we teach today, will be the the uh, the, the the progenitor of the, the Asia the Asiatic races. Alright? And we see how they are their hair is more so on the straighter side, you know what I mean? And so we see that, you know, even for me, for example, I am a so-called, you know, biracial person, right? Father will be Judah, a uh, mother will be uh, considered an Ammonite or, uh, you know, uh, Japanese, Asian, right? And, you know, comparing it to, you know, the, the you know, the phenotypical type of uh, uh, hair of our people, the woolly texture hair, the, the very nappy type of hair, it's a mixture of both. I have a mixture of both, of of that woolly and also of the of the uh, of the straight, which then causes me to have a a more like a, a longer type curled hair. We understand this. So um, yeah, and and so again, you know, that just shows you that you know it is deeper than that. All right, it's deeper than that, and um. Like it's just one more thing, one more thing, one more thing on that. Song of Solomon, chapter four. Verse four. They believe that the Edomites are white because the Bible describes Esau as red, ruddy, and hairy. So in Genesis chapter 25, verse 25, the Bible describes Esau as coming out red and hairy all over. And from that, they assume that the Edomites are white people. But if they look at King David, the Bible also describes King David as red and ruddy as well. The Bible describes King David in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12, also as red and ruddy, using the same Hebrew word as Esau, Admoni, which means red and ruddy. So if they believe that all white people are red and ready, then they also have to believe that David, King David, was also a white person who was red and ready. That's it. I've Why had you it gotta with go you. there? Is it that time of the month again? <laughs>